John 20. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying. Yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw, and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back, and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself, and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus, and stood in the midst, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. Eh, shalom. All praises to Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham Rakakodash. Much peace and mercy to you, brothers and sisters, that actually believe in the Lord's covenant without having to see anything, without needing to see a new body, without seeing, without needing to see signs, but just through your understanding, which is what the Lord has given uh, certain of us um, in these last days. All right, because in the when the Lord came, it says that He uh, came down and gave men gifts. So in this time, certain of us have the ability, as we just read, or as you just heard, the ability to, uh, let's just grab it, retain sins, 
And this is what men don't understand. So I'm going to go into this real quick. This is John 20. John 20, 23, I believe it was. Yep, it's uh, John 20 and 21. It says, Then said Yahweh Shai to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. So certain of us have been sent by the Lord to teach his covenant. So there's a specific understanding that certain men that the Lord actually sent in these last days are going to have. It's not going to be a camp doctrine. It's going to be the same exact thing that the Lord and the apostles and the disciples were teaching and Paul were teaching in the first century. It's going to be that same exact testimony. That is the testimony that it said that the elect would have. And you can't testify of something if you did not see it or were not there. Okay. So the testimony of the actual doctrine the Lord taught is in certain men. This is what the Lord meant when he said that uh, I will send you the Holy Spirit, the comforter, and it shall lead you into all understanding all things. He also said, I am within you. So there are certain men in this time that are actually of God. And there are a lot of men that are pretending to be of God and that are acting because they don't. And how you could tell who's of God in these last days is if they understand the Lord's covenant. If they don't understand the Lord's covenant, they didn't understand the Lord. And they didn't accept the Lord in the first century. This is the same exact generation uh, that lived when the Lord uh, came in the first century. Okay, this is why it hints to that when it tells you there's, there's uh, situations where the Lord told the wicked scribes and Pharisees that this same word will judge you in the last day. That is the time we're living in now. So that's showing you these same men are back in this in these last days. Also, the one that pierced the Lord. These are examples showing you this is the same generation that is going to receive the judgment when the Lord returns. So if you're not teaching the Lord in this time and agreeing with the Lord's doctrine, that means that you didn't agree with the Lord when he came. So by default, you're being judged by it. And that is what he told the wicked scars and Pharisees. Now, the ones that did believe received what? The Holy Spirit. So now they're back with the Holy Spirit. Okay. John 20 and 21, it says, Then said Yahweh shot to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father have sent me, even so sent I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. I'm going to read this in the NLT. It says, John 20, 23. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. So this is heavy. Because men are, um, men are against the doctrine of the Lord. So by default to the Lord, since men are denying us teaching and calling us crazy, all right, their sins are not being forgiven in this time. <laughs> because we're judging you and reading you out of the covenant, the law, and all the things that took place in that time. And what? Men are disagreeing with it once again. This is the same thing that happened when the Lord came. Why? Because they cannot get out from underneath the dominion of the old law of Moses. They still think that that has dominion, but that has dominion over them because they are of the old. They did not believe in the Lord. So they were not entered and perfected forever. There's a certain spirits back then that believed in the Lord and now they're back doing what? They're believing in the Lord again. This was the gift and the promise to those that believed in that time. You're going to come back and you're going to understand the scriptures exactly how you're supposed to. And that's what you're seeing. And you're seeing who has been breaking down the scriptures wrong the whole time. And who is still under the dominion of the, Mo the law of Moses. <laughs> that is the, the, the parable of Galatians. Men are in bondage spiritually to the law of Moses. They cannot escape. The Lord has made that a trap for them. Because <laughs> a lot of men have used the old law in these last days in deceit. They have not used it lawfully, as the scripture said. Paul, Paul even told you you can use that law lawfully. Men don't even use the, the old law of Moses lawfully in these last days. It's crazy, man. So this is why the Lord told, told these wicked scribes and Pharisees and those that didn't believe the Lord that you don't even keep your own law. The Lord came teaching his own law, and he had to tell these men that they don't even keep their own law. So it's heavy what's going on. And the fact that uh, the Lord gave us power to forgive or forget sins is a very heavy thing. And men do not 
understand that. And that is why, um, that is why, uh, <laughs> that is why the Lord, when he came, all right, when he came, he gave the ultimatum. You believe in this covenant, your sins are forgiven. You don't believe in this covenant, your sins are not forgiven. So as we are teaching his covenant in these last days, if you don't believe and, and repent to this covenant, your sins will not be forgiven in this time. If you, what? Come into the understanding and believing of the new covenant, as the scripture says, that's the whole context of the, of the, new, the new Testament. I don't know what men, the world has been reading or men in camp specifically in groups and organizations have been reading the whole time and this whole context of even the time we're living in has to do with the Lord only. It's a continuation. We're still in the time of the Lord. This is the time of the return. And men are teaching against the Lord and denying his covenant upon his return. This is what's happening in these last days, man. So it says, verse 24, let's keep reading. But Thomas, one of the 12, called Didymus, was not with him when Yahushua came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. So it's, this is showing you that um, right here, Thomas needed to see something. And that is the spirit of a lot of guys All right, in these last days. They need to see something. They need to see a sign. Now, luckily for the Thomas, <laughs> he was already chosen. And so the Lord came and showed himself. So in the spirit in these times, the Lord has came and made his abode with certain of us in the spirit. This is why we believe <laughs> this came with us. All right. This came with remembering this. This is all about remembering. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, the actual spirit, it's about remembering. Because that's what the Spirit said it'll, it'll do. It said it'll bring you into remembrance of all things. It'll make you understand all things. You'll know all things. Because that is the comforter. That is the Spirit that, the, that was received by what? The apostles from the Lord. Then the Lord said right here, receive ye the Holy Spirit, man. So if we have the Holy Spirit in that time, we have the ability to either forgive your sins or forget them. Excuse me, forgive your sins or hold you to your sins. That is a very, that is a part of the spiritual power that men don't have. So men are out here scoffing against, and it's not really about us, but the Lord gave us his power. It tells you right there. He says we have the ability to forgive your sins or hold you to them in these last days. <laughs> it's crazy, man. And ultimately, this is what the Lord's doctrine is doing. It's holding men to their sins or it's allowing men to be forgiven of them. But men do not want to be forgiven to the, forgiven of their sins in these last days because they think that the law of Moses is going to justify them for all of their sins. Not understanding that's there's no justification in that. So if you're not repenting to Yahweh Shai's covenant, it, there, there's no other way for you to for your sins to be forgiven. That's not what men, men are not understanding this. There's no other way for your sins to be forgiven in these last days, but through. Yeah, I'll try. Let me grab something real quick. This is the only way. <laughs> Let me grab this real quick. This is Acts five. heavy man acts 5 and 26 then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence for they feared the people lest they should have been stoned and when they had brought them they set them before the council and the high priest asked them saying did not we straightly command that ye should not teach in this name <laughs> guys in the same spirit in these last days they hate that we're teaching the new covenant they hate it as soon as you bring up the new covenant guys think you're bugged out <laughs> Because they're in the same spirit they were in in the first century. You, you, it's, it's nothing new under the sun. You are who you were when the Lord came. You have the same understanding. That's why many only. That's why a majority of our people can only stand, understand Moses. Because they didn't understand the Lord when he came. 
by default, what does that what does that show you? They were against him. Because when they were nothing but teaching what the Lord was teaching, teaching what Paul was teaching, man. It's crazy. Verse 28 saying, Did not we straightly command that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. So what Paul and the Lord were teaching wasn't the same thing as what the, the, the priest and those men in the synagogue. It was not the same doctrine. And what were they teaching in the synagogue? The law of Moses. So the Lord was not teaching the law of Moses. He was teaching a different doctrine. A lot of you guys, um, a lot of you guys need, you really need to go sit down and go read these scriptures because the Lord was not teaching what you guys teach in the camp out uh, based off of the law of Moses and what the doctrines and commandments of men. The Lord was not teaching that. The Lord was teaching repentance. The Lord was teaching you of a better way. This is what the Lord came teaching and was put to death for it. The Lord was not teaching you uh, the law of Moses. He was teaching his own doctrine. And then he even told you his doctrine wasn't even his. It was the Most High's doctrine. So guys are not even listening to God in these last days. Guys are not listening to his son in these last days. Guys are not even listening to the Moses because they can't keep Moses' law. So it's a bunch of our people in these last days that are lawless spiritually. They can't be, uh, they can't be corrected. That is why the Lord told a lot of my people that his word have no place in them. This is not for a majority of our people. This is only for those that can see and can receive this. And it'll be made easy for you to receive if you're really of this. If you're not of this, you're going to still try to combine Moses. When the Lord died to, what, discharge us from Moses and to abolish Moses' law as being the dominion and standard of justification. Men don't understand this. The Lord opened up another type of law, another type of covenant. Not after Aaron. We keep telling you guys, this is not a Levitical priesthood. Uh, this is not a Levitical priesthood uh, law or covenant. This is not after Moses. Men can't understand these things, man. But they're going to keep continuing to teach Moses. And when you continue to teach Moses, you are by default against the New Testament. So you can't even read the New Testament because you don't believe in it by default. It's heavy. <laughs> Acts 5 and 28 saying, did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in his name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our father, the God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath the most high exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And so if you are not agreeing with the Lord and you're still keeping Moses, which keeps you in a perpetual cycle of a curse, the, <laughs> by default, you have no forgiveness of sins in these times. And that is what the Lord told a lot of men. And uh, I think it's in, let me get this real quick. Paul told them. <laughs> There's no forgiveness for a lot of guys. You guys use the scripture in Hebrews to talk about Esau. It's really talking about you guys because there's no forgiveness for your sins in this time. If you're not agreeing with Yahushua's covenant, that means you, you, you don't have a sacrifice for forgiveness in these times. <laughs> there's no sacrifice you can give according to the Old uh, Testament or according to the Old uh, Law of Moses, the Old Covenant. There's no, there's no type of sacrifice in it. You can't keep no certain day. The Lord said he's not hearing it. The Lord reiterated it in the book of Hebrews. Even the Lord himself understood, which is why he understood why he had to give himself. Because he understood no type of offering according to the old covenant would, be, would satisfy the Most High. It had, so he had to give himself. This is and he, when he gave himself, he opened up a different type of covenant. Moses was no longer needed. It was retired. You have to understand these things. This is, this, is, this is really understanding the scriptures. Guys with garments on don't understand the scriptures. They don't. They understand what? The history and the knowledge written in the scriptures. That has nothing to do with the actual Holy Spirit men were giving in the first century. The wicked scribes and Pharisees knew knowledge. They knew about our fathers. They knew about the Romans. They knew tons of 
information about Caesar. They were best friends with them. They were highly educated in what? The Romans' information, most likely. And the knowledge of our fathers. But that didn't mean they had the spirit or they would have accepted the Lord. Knowing all that stuff don't mean you have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> there was many philosophers of knowledge that Paul had to teach. Paul had to debate with. Greeks, Romans. They had lots of knowledge in history. But what did they miss? They didn't have the Holy Spirit. That <laughs> is crazy, bro. You can't have the Holy Spirit if you're still stuck on Moses, man. It's impossible. You haven't even moved on to... to enter in you haven't entered in many men have not entered in to the lord uh the lord's covenant in these last days they're not in yahweh shai when you see all the scriptures written in yahweh shai i'm in in the lord many men are not even in the lord they're not in yahweh shai that means if you if that means that you're in that covenant you agree with his saying you agree with his law you're putting forth your best effort according to his way the new living way not moses Moses' law keeps you in the flesh. <laughs> Yahweh Shai frees you to the spirit by way of his law, by way of his uh, principles, by way of his covenant. It's very heavy. It's beautiful, too. Now, a lot of you guys, the Lord told you this word have no place in you. So what's going to happen is you're just going to teach Moses because that's as far as your understanding goes until the end. That's it. There is no justification in Moses. So guys are going to wonder like they wandered in the wilderness for another, you know, however long. Because they can't, they can't understand Yahweh Shah's covenant. It's too high. It's too much. <laughs> and it can only be put in new bottles, like the Lord said. Lest the bottles burst. <laughs> this is, uh, let's get this real quick. Because guys love to go to this scripture. Don't even understand it. This is Hebrews 12. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It looks like you lost another one. This is uh, Hebrews 12. And 12. It says, Wherefore, lift up thy hands, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of the Lord, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance. Though he sought it carefully with tears, for ye are not come unto the mount that which that might be touched, and that burn with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. This is describing what during the situation with Moses and the giving of the old law. This is so it's showing you in the spirit. This is nothing like the old law, what the Lord brought and what He came to teach you. Showing you another comparison spiritually. This is not the same thing. It's different. It says here, and the sound of the trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Yahawashai, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkling, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Let me see what this one says in the NLT. NLT, Hebrews 12 and 24. Ye have not come to Yahweh Shai, the one who mediates the new covenant between God and people. Ye have 
Ye have come to Yahushua, the one who mediates the new covenant between God and the people, and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of forgiveness, instead of crying out for vengeance like the blood of Abel. So this is what the new covenant is about. It's not concerning the old law of Moses. It is something entirely new and different. Men can't understand it because there's no place for it inside of men. <laughs> so the kingdom is not really inside of a lot of men. Men out there teaching the Lord or teaching the scriptures, but the Lord is not even in them. He has there's no place for the Lord to go inside men because it shows you they're denying him by way of denying his covenant. So the Lord can't even get inside men in these last days because there's no place for them. There's no place for the Lord in men because men are full of hate and men are of their father, the devil, like the scripture says, man. That's why John said, uh, who have warned you from, to flee from the wrath to come? Let me see if I can grab that. So when we teach, only the elect are going to take heed. Uh, those that are of the world, they're not going to take heed to the warning. Because that's showing you the Lord, there's no warning for you in this time. If you're of the, if you're of the flesh, you need to see something physically. You could pretend like you're spiritual in this time but if you're of the flesh you need to see something you need an elder you need a man to tell you you can't just read these scriptures and see what it says you need a a, a head over you or something <laughs> you see that's why guys cannot get away from the elders that's why a lot of guys are stuck they can't leave the camps because they need something just like um in in uh during the time of moses our people needed that calf they needed something because they're not of the they're not of the spirit, they're of flesh. <laughs> so they don't even move in the spirit. <laughs> you see? This is uh Matthew 3. So a lot of guys are not being warned. That's why a lot of guys can't understand the covenant. The warning is gonna be heard through the elect. They're gonna be like, damn, let me go see if the scriptures say that. And it's gonna say it. And they're gonna be like, damn. And they're gonna leave, and that's what you're seeing. But certain men that's not gonna leave and they're staying in there. That's because the Lord has closed them off. So the it can the understanding will never penetrate. So they can never experience being warned of anything. <laughs> That's why the Lord said they shall not receive any signs. But the prophet Jonas. So if you can receive things in the spirit in this time, which is the Lord's covenant, that is the warning. The warning is going out through the spirit. And if you're not of the spirit, you ain't you no no warning is being uh received by you. <laughs> You're just going to keep teaching Moses. It's crazy, man. Matthews 3 and 7, but he, Matthews 3 and 6 and went and were baptized of him. Hold on, let's go up a little bit. Matthew 3 and 1, and th in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern, leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins." confessing their sins but listen to this but when he saw many of the pharisees and sadducees come to his baptism he said unto them oh generation of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come so there's men there's a lot of men in these time where the lord if you're not if you don't receive the lord in this time and it's cut off completely you can't read these scriptures and see that we're not under moses anymore you ain't receiving no warning in this time. There's no warning for you. But the prophet and but us teaching this covenant. And if you can't get it, then that shows you that the Lord ain't dealing with you. It's real simple. You can't sit up here and go out and teach what the scriptures do not say. You can't keep doing it. That showed that uh, what's showing is a lot of men in these last days that are not of God. It's all been an act. Men have made up their own narratives in these last days. <laughs> It's all types of narratives. It's, it's a different narrative every camp, group, organization. Now guys in, in, in Great Millstone are against the car, guys in Sakari. 
guys and Zakaria against Nate. This is madness, and none of you are teaching the Lord. Because all of you guys are the same niggas that, that did not understand the Lord. You guys have better things to teach in these last days. Like women and prophecies and, and, and robot dogs and all this stuff. And nobody's teaching what the Lord came teaching. So how can you guys be teaching our people how to repent? And how can you be showing them that the kingdom is within them? What type of repentance are you men in these highways and byways and in these big camps and groups? What type of repentance are you teaching? Repent to what? The law of Moses? That's what you, in the spirit, that's what you men think, all you guys in these groups, organizations, and camps, and all that stuff. Even certain men that, that, that know about the new covenant. You guys think this is about Moses. It shows. This is not about Moses, man. Did Moses, is his glory disregarded? Absolutely not. But the morality of Mo, that Moses wanted us to keep, that's already in the elect. It tells you that. The morality, just because our people were given a law doesn't mean they were moral, morally upright, keeping it. It was a carnal law. This is why the wicked scribes and Pharisees were able to push the old laws, carnal ordinances and commandments and days, but inwardly they were wicked. You see? That old law and the carnal ordinances could never make you morally upright. It can never do it. It can never, it can never, I'll say this, it'll never morally correct you. It'll never morally correct you. And that is all the Lord came teaching. His doctrine and his law and his covenant, it morally, it, it keep. It, it, what does it say? It tells you in Acts, it says he came to make just men perfect. So if you weren't just, by default, you couldn't understand the Lord in that time. The Lord called many guys devils. A lot of men are devils in these last days, man. You're just not of God. You're of the world. You're going to teach Moses. That's all you understand is Moses. That's all you get out of when you, when you read these scriptures. That's all men can understand and see through the spirit is Moses. They can't see the higher things. Because they are from beneath and we are from above. Whether we go, they cannot come. They can't come this high in the spirit to understand this. They can't see like this. You see, that is what's happening in these last days. Uh, Matthew 3 and John told them, he said, I don't know who warned you guys. You guys ain't going to make it. You guys are already condemned already. Why would John say this if they weren't already condemned? If somebody has already been found guilty, you're going to tell them, I don't know who warned you. You've already been found guilty, basically. So guys, these men were already condemned. That's why the Lord, that's why John said that to them. I don't know why you're coming over here. You're already condemned, basically. Let's read it, John, Matthew 3 and 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And OT, but when he saw many Pharisees and scribes and Sadducees come to watch him baptize, he denounced them. He denounced them. He denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned you to flee God's wrath? Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to, of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And that is what's happening. Through the Lord's doctrine, men are being cast down and taken down and being exposed. <laughs> Guys are being hewn down because they're not bringing forth the fruits the Lord told us to bring forth in these last days. Because they don't even understand his doctrine, how to bring forth the fruits of the Lord. You don't even understand the Lord's covenant to bring forth the fruits. Of the, that the Lord will require you to bring forth. Guys can't bring forth any fruit to the spirit because they don't have it. You can't have the spirit and disagree with the fact that the Lord came and established a new covenant. You can't have the spirit. It's impossible. If you don't believe that the Lord didn't establish a new covenant, by default, you don't even have the Holy Spirit. 
if you could see it and understand it, that is because you have the Holy Spirit in you. <laughs> a lot of men are spiritless in these last days and they have the Bible. It's like, imagine like zombies out there just... You just walk by us a bunch of zombies from like a scary movie. Just have the Bible. Uh, that's exactly what guys are in these last days. Uh, by people walking by like, oh, my God. The zombies teach the Bible. That's exactly what you have out there because they're spiritless. If you don't understand the Lord's covenant, you do not have the spirit. That's a default thing. Let me show you. Let me see. That's why the Lord, those uh, the apostles that were with him, they believed him. So by them believing him. What? They receive the spirit. It's crazy, man. A lot of you guys are a year of the world, man. This is heavy, too. This is, um, mm -hmm. this is first John four. <laughs> first John four and one beloved believe believe not every spirit. Tons of spirits out on the highways and byways and garments. Tons of spirits. But try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. See that? Many false prophets have gone out into the world. Let's read it in the NLT. Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the spirit. You must test them to see if the spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. And that's what you see in these last days. Many false prophets. If you say that we're not in the new covenant, yeah, you're not in the new covenant. But if you can't see that a new covenant was established when you read the new testament, that means you're not even of the spirit. <laughs> you can't even see that. You're blind. All you see, all you see when you read the New Testament is Moses. You don't even understand that the Lord was teaching something, a different doctrine than Moses. That's the whole reason he got put to death. Why would he get put to death if he was teaching Moses and they were, the Pharisees loved teaching Moses? They would have loved the Lord. You guys don't have no fucking understanding in these last days. Go read the scriptures. You don't even understand context. Men will believe men that are teaching the wrong context of the scriptures instead of go read it themselves. It's heavy, bro. That is showing you the amount of the idolatry and man worship and man pleasing that has infiltrated that. And those are spirits that have been upon men for decades. All that stuff. That is why the Lord said, I'm going to grab some real quick. I'm going to come right back. Got to grab this. All you guys, the whole ministry of that camp stuff, that's not the ministry and that's not the way the Lord taught. It's not the doctrine the Lord taught. Your ministrations you men have set up in these last days, all these groups, all this stuff, the church, all this stuff is set up by the doctrines and precepts of man. How man wanted to put stuff together, how man wanted to run things. This is what you're seeing in these last days and it's the last defense of Satan. Satan is trying to use the scriptures. But you can't deceive the elect. The elect are sent back, perfected with the understanding, ready to give the testimony again. Because it's naturally in them. Because they can see, they can see and understand the Lord and what he came teaching when they read the New Testament. It's not hidden to them. It's not locked to them. <clears throat> Many men, this is not accessible for them in the spirit. They can't see it. It's heavy, bro. This is why the Lord said, through your belief, you have access. What did he mean by that? Through your belief, through your faith, you have access to what? To understanding this high level of wisdom, which Paul talked about. The manifold wisdom, the mystery. What's spoken of in Luke 10, 24, when it says many prophets and, and, uh, and kings and princes desire to see what we see. Which meaning they desire to understand the high understanding that we understand right now. Certain of us have. That the Lord gave us as a gift. It's nothing of our own. The Lord said, I have, I, he said, I have sent them. Even as you sent me, I send them. So there's certain men that the Lord actually sent. And that goes back full circle to what I uh, said in the beginning of the lesson. So they're going to believe. They're going to teach the covenant. They're going to or understand the covenant and believe in the covenant. And they're going to, they're going to see that this is way past Moses. 
crazy, man. Let me see if I can grab this. I gotta get this. I think it's like March 6th. Cause this is you guys in these like these camps, man. This is Isaiah. This is Isaiah twenty nine. It's heavy, man. You guys are not teaching what the Lord was teaching. You're teaching another doctrine, which Paul said, if you teach any other doctrine besides that. That specific doctrine the Lord taught out of his mouth in the first century lets you be accursed. A lot of you guys are cursed, man. And it's based off of what you're teaching. You, it's showing forth what, who you are, what you are, what type of relationship you have with the Lord in these times. Based off your words, what you're teaching, how you understand this Bible. Um. Yeah, this is, let's, get to the, let's get to the point. This is in Matthews. I believe the Lord said it. Matthew 15 and 1, then came to Yahushai, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? That's you guys. All you guys in this. Why you guys don't do what the apostles do? Why you guys don't do what Nate do? Y'all ain't got. Y'all y'all learn the name from us. Oh, so y'all y'all teaching y'all own. You guys in the same spirit. Because you guys are under them elders again, man. This is heavy, bro. You guys ask us, why are you not in the camp teaching? Why you guys don't go out and teach no more? That's a tradition of the elders, of your elders in this time. Guys even said it out of their mouth verbatim. Yeah, this is, our, this is a tradition around here. I didn't hear this many times. We've been around you guys. You forgot? It's crazy, man. A lot of us in, uh, that understand the Lord in these last days who came from amongst a lot of you groups and camps. You forgot? You men speaking their own tongue falling on themselves. Yeah, it's a tradition around here. I know stuff is a tradition in Nate Camp and all them ICBK. Yeah, it's a tradition and this and that. Let's read it again. Matthews 15. That's what you guys are being taught by. The tradition of men. You guys are not being taught by God in these scriptures. It's not happening. Matthews 15 and 1. Then came to you how shall scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat but when they eat bread. But he who answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? Let's read that again. Man, this is the Lord cutting these guys. But he answered and said unto them again. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? That is what's happening. Men are transgressing transgressing against the law of Moses by these wicked traditions and all these types of camps and groups and organizations set up in these last days. Moses told you in the law in Deuteronomy, when the Lord comes, that's it. You follow him. Guys are still back in Moses trying to keep Moses. It looks like you lost another one. Not even keeping Moses properly. Transgressing the traditions of you. <laughs> it's crazy. You guys just don't know what the hell you're doing transgressing God by your traditions all types of stuff is going on in the last days because men are taught men that have what see the thing that happened that has happened in these last days men are being taught by basically like some black culture type of Israelite thing which is traditional type of thing carnal things it's not of the spirit because if you don't understand the Lord's covenant by default all you men that are teaching and are heads of things and you don't even understand the Lord you're not even teaching our people the spirit. So you're teaching tra your traditions. See how these traditions of men and all this stuff have come back with you guys in these last days? It's heavy, bro. Matthew 15, doing the same thing. Matthew 15 and 3. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say... Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me and honor not his father or his mother. He shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you saying this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain 
they do worship me teaching for doctrines. This is what you guys teach. Your doctrines are based off what? The commandments of men. It's not based off of the commandments of Yahweh. It's based off of the commandments of the of men. So when Yahweh says keep my commandments, guys are not doing that. You can't keep the Lord's commandments if you disagree with his, his covenant. Just as, just as Moses established a covenant, it came with, it, with Moses' commandments. When the, law, when the Lord came and established his covenant, it came with his own commandments, which you're supposed to keep. But men are not keeping the most high, the Lord's, the most high son's covenant, the Lord himself's covenant. You're not keeping his commands because you want to keep Moses' uh, commands. You want to keep man on the earth's commands. You do not understand that this is the Lord that came down in the flesh. Not no regular man. <laughs> he came into flesh to show us. So his commandments are not of man. You guys in the camps are being taught by the commandments. Your doctrines are off the commandments of men. Men's rules. Your traditions rules. God's talking about you can't wear shorts. That's a tradition. That's man's commandment. That's not God's commandment. A lot of guys are following man's commandments in these last days. Not God's commandments. It's clear. And you can't follow Yahushua's commandments if you disagree with his covenant. So guys are not following anything in these last days. It's very heavy. Moses, Moses ain't going to get you men saved in these last days. The Lord came and changed laws according to the old law. Meaning he was taking away stuff and adding things, taking away. He did that. It was a changing. Listen, it shows you that. If you guys think I'm crazy. Man, you say the, the Lord changed the law. It tell you. Hold on. <laughs> oh, man, you guys don't understand, man. Let me see if I can find this. You said you, the Lord didn't change the law? That's what guys are going to say. And it's written. This is uh, Hebrews 7. So why does it say this? Break this down wrong. Hebrews 7. Let me open this up, man. I'm going to end it here, man. Break this down wrong. Break Hebrews 7 down wrong. Let's go into Hebrews 7 real quick and we'll end it. This is just through the spirit, man. Just looking through YouTube, man. Guys, just really, a lot of men do not really understand this Bible, man. They really don't because it's hidden because they have no access to this understanding in these last days. They didn't understand the Lord then and they don't now. So they don't have any access to this type of uh, wisdom and this understanding, man. It's heavy. The only way you'll get access is if you repent to the new covenant. That'll give you the access because then you'll have faith in Yahushai and his covenant alone and not Moses. Then you'll have access to understand under uh, certain things and higher things. Until then, being in a camp, you're going to be locked in bondage like it tells you in the scriptures. So let's read this and break this down wrong. Hebrews 7 and 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation, king of righteousness. And after that, also king of Salem, which is king of of peace without father without mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the son of god abideth a priest continually now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch abraham gave the tenth of the spoils and verily they that are of the sons of levi who receive the office of the priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law that is of their brethren though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But, listen to this, break this down wrong, but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. And, with all, and, with all, and without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better, gets better. And here, <clears throat> men that die receive tithes, but there... He receiveth them, of whom it is witness that he liveth. And as I may so say, Levi also, check this out, who receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. 
for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Do you understand how heavy that is? Showing you that this covenant and this priesthood that we're a part of, that certain of us have been entered into and understand by way of a gift, by way of the Lord being in us, by way of the Holy Spirit being upon us, we are a part of a different priesthood that is far superior than it was before the priesthood of Levi, which was attached to the old law of Moses. See this? Verse 11. If therefore, listen to this. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? This is not about Moses' law. This is a different type of law, which is only for the spiritual in this time. It's only for the elect in this time. So if you can't understand this, this is not for you. This is not for all our people. This is not for the majority of our people. This is only for the elect, the remnant to understand. That's it. And the elect are going to understand it. They can't be deceived. They're going to be like, dang, that did say that. So what have these guys been? Yeah, it's going to be, it's a whole lot of, uh, 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 of, of cutting down of trees happening in this time. Like the scripture says, the ax is being laid to the root of the trees, man. Guys, teaching false doctrine, all this stuff's being cut down because the Lord is actually, his doctrine is actually being taught. It's crazy. The spirit is on men to teach these things. Hebrews 7 and 11. So you guys are still after the, Levit the Levitical priesthood, which is attached to the law of Moses, which is what camps, groups, and organizations minister today. That is a part, that is the whole uh, spirit of their ministration. Look at IUIC, look at Great Millstone, look at all these different other camps, ISUBK. What is the spirit behind the ministration? It's the law of Moses. It's the old Mosaic law. That's why they wear the border of blue. That's why they do the Passover ceremonies, keep these days, that day. If you look at the spirit behind the ministration of these men in these last days, it is after the spirit of the law of Moses. The priesthood that the Lord came teaching far exceeds that priesthood of, of, of Levi and Aaron. Let's read it. Hebrews 7 and 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, showing you that the things that the men are keeping and holding our people to in these last days, which is the law of Moses, which is a bondage, which is also known as what? The law of uh, condemnation, the ministration of death, because you can't be justified of anything in it. It's showing that it doesn't make you perfect. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek? So if that law was so perfect, why did the Lord come and establish another priesthood, a different type of priesthood, after a different order? Why? We need answers. None of you guys can answer these questions. It's crazy, man. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek? What other need was there for another a priest to come? What, was, what need was there for the Lord to come if the Levitical law of Moses was made you perfect? It was so great in making you morally upright. Would have been no need for the Lord to come if righteousness and justification came by the Levitical priesthood, which many men are practicing and holding our people to in these last days. They're holding you to never become perfect. <laughs> They're holding you to never understand the Lord in these last days. It's crazy. The new covenant is an entirely different priesthood, an entirely different order, an entirely different ministration, an entirely different spirit. It's for, for just men and just spirits being that are made perfect through it. That's all it's for. All you wicked guys, this ain't for you, man. You're carnal. So the Lord left you with just the carnal Mosaic law. That that's all you understand. Hebrews 7 and 12. For the priesthood being changed. See that? There is made of necessity a change also of the law. Dang, so the law changed? The priesthood changed? So what are guys doing in these last days holding our people to the old Levitical priesthood when they're saying it's been, it was changed when the Lord came? What is going on in these last days? Is many false prophets that have went out into Israel that have not the spirit of the Lord. That is what you're seeing. That's why we tell guys, really go back and read these scriptures or you're going to be condemned, man, following guys that are not even of God in these last days that are keeping you under, under the Levitical priesthood, which will never make you perfect. It, I think it says that again in the book of Hebrews. I believe nine or 10. 
It said it can never make you perfect. But how come it says that after believing in Yahweh Shai, you become and you're made perfect? Hmm. I'd rather follow that. And that is what the spirit has led certain of us that are actually of the spirit to do in these last days. It's heavy. Hebrews 7. <laughs> guys are not following the Lord. Don't be fooled by guys in garments in these last days. On the highways in these last days. Big groups, big beards, canes, staves, incense. Keeping this day. Big feasts. Don't be fooled. <laughs> because a lot of guys are false prophets in these last days. They're not even breaking down the scriptures right. So they keep all these carnal things to show forth outwardly that they're righteous to the people because they love the honor of men rather than the honor of God. And God looks on the inward things. God don't look on the outward. Men of the world are going to be received outwardly by the world. <laughs> it's crazy, man. I'm going to read this. I'm going to get out of here, man. Hebrews 7 and 12 for the priesthood being changed. So the priesthood has been changed from the Levitical priesthood to the priesthood of Melchizedek. What don't you guys understand? And what I don't understand what men are reading in these last days, because a lot of you guys are in darkness. The Lord don't want you to see. You have no access to seeing or understanding this at all. So all you teach is Moses, because that's as far as your understanding goes. Hebrews seven. That's why you get. That's why even in the New Testament, these guys told the Lord, you, "We are Moses' disciple." So if they would have thought the Lord was Moses' disciple by keeping by the Lord keeping Moses' stuff, why would they kill the Lord? Because they didn't believe the Lord to be a disciple of Moses. They thought the Lord was a demon. That is how heavy the understanding and the doctrine the Lord came teaching. That's what we're teaching now. And only those that are of God are going to receive it. And the same thing's happening now. On both sides, the sides of the wicked scribes and Pharisees, the same effect is taking the same effect on men. And the righteous of our people is taking the same effect on them. They're being made to see and walk and understand. Because they're giving, they're being given access because they believe. Once you believe, that's it. The Lord gives you access, and that's what a lot of men don't understand, man. Hebrews 7 and 12, for the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Like you lost Let's word. read it in the NLT. And if the priesthood is changed, the law must also be changed to permit it. Break that down wrong. They, the Lord came, and when He came, it changed. It was a changing of the law. How clear do you have to break this down to the, to our people, man? That still want to hold you to Moses. The Lord just literally said, "I changed it from Moses to Melchizedek," but God's saying, "No, we're gonna keep Moses still. We're gonna keep the Levitical priesthood still." God, our people are very rebellious in these last days, man. And they do not listen to who the Lord sent and or who the Lord put the spirit on to tell them things, man. They don't they don't listen. A rebellious people, man. Lying children. They tell you that in Isaiah. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. This is what you're seeing. <laughs> it's nothing new under the sun, man. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. It have already been of old time. God talk about we come back and also this. Yeah, you come back and you come back doing the same shit. You come back with the same understanding. And those that believe in the Lord, they came back because they were perfected then and they came back with the perfected and un perfected understanding in this time. That is their gift in this time. That is a part of their <laughs> the beginning of the uh that is the kingdom, the beginning of the kingdom for, for them. It's all within them already. It's a guys talk about they need a new body. <laughs> it's crazy. What are you going to get a new body for? You don't even have the spirit. You got a wicked spirit, an evil spirit of hatred, of darkness. So you put that same spirit in another body, is it going to be another body of darkness? You have to understand how disagreeing and not believing how heavy that was and when the Lord came. If you didn't agree or believe and you scoffed the Lord, you were sealed to never understanding the Lord forever. That's why even certain people that did, did what they did to the Lord, they repented and the Lord allowed them, like Paul, they repented and the Lord allowed them access because they repented and actually believed what the Lord was saying and walked towards the Lord. So the Lord actually gave them the eyes to actually see fully and what he did with Paul was amazing. He gave Paul full access. He's like, damn, I was doing this to the Lord. I'm going to go out and teach. 
I'm going to go out and really uh, show our people that it's not about Moses, what the Lord was actually doing. And then what happened to Paul? Same thing happened to Paul. The same thing that, the same thing that happened to the Lord, man. Because our people, what? They, didn't, they won't receive the Lord. They won't just let Moses go and receive the Lord. It's heavy. So it says here, Hebrews 7 and 12 in the NLT, and if the priesthood is changed, the law must also be changed to permit it. Break this down wrong, please. Why would he have, why would, why is there need to be a change? And we're, if you guys say we're still under the Levitical priesthood, why does it say it need to be changed? Why was there a change? What change was made? Guys, don't tell you this and bring these things out, man, because guys are hiding stuff and teaching them deceit in these last days. They teach you for their own belly. They're not really teaching you what it says verbatim in the scriptures. Guys will read this scripture and it says, no, it wasn't changed. Like, this is how crazy men have become in these last days off of false doctrine. And the idolizing of men in these last days. It's very sickening, man. This is why we tell guys, really go, you better go sit down and read these scriptures again because a lot of men are going down the wrong path in these last days. And But a lot of guys, it's meant for them to go down that path. And certain of, a, certain of you of guys, it's meant for them to get off that path and actually eventually see this thing for what it really is and read the scriptures. It's not about elders. It's not about camps. It's not about groups. It's about if you understand what the Lord was teaching and do you believe what he was teaching or do you just want to follow Moses when Moses told you to believe and do what the Lord says in the law of Moses. It's crazy, man. Stuff gets you heated, man, because our people are rebellious. Hebrews 7 and 12 and if the priesthood is changed, the law also, the law must also be changed to permit it. For the priesthood we are talking about belongs to a different tribe whose members have never served at the altar as priests. Let's go back to KJV. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. See that? Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, thou, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So that is the new priesthood, man. It's not the priesthood of Aaron. It's not the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood anymore. So men in these big ass camps and groups and they that's how the administration is after the, the old law. You guys are going off. You're going against your house. Shire. You're making his death in vain. Like you like he didn't just die to establish a new priesthood and change that. It said he changed it from that to the, the Melchizedek priesthood. Like how clear can you got can this get? Guys are uh, in these last days uh, set up to stop the elect from understanding these things. Because they don't. And that's what you have happening in camps and groups and organizations, man. That's what it tells you. It says that they don't enter in themselves and they stop other men from entering in. Oh, there's the entering in of something. What is it talking about entering into? I just talked about the access to something. See that? The keys of knowledge, it says men are, 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 men are stopping men from understanding. <laughs> it's crazy, man. So I'm going to go ahead and get it out of here, man. There is a new priesthood. And the men that were set up to teach it have been given what? Certain abilities to either forgive your sins. They have been given the power of discernment. They've been, uh, uh, they've been given the ability to not forgive your sins and hold you to them. They've been given the power of mercy. We've been given the power of faith. We've been given gifts. Let me grab that. I'm going to end here, man. That's what I was looking for earlier. Get out of here. It's not about Moses, man. This is Ephesians 4. Let's get it in there. Let it real quick. This is Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. There is one body and one spirit. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and the Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. 
But us, every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Yahweh Shai. See that? So there's no gift if you're not receiving Yahweh Shai and agreeing with him. You don't get no gift. For, if you're disagreeing with someone, why in the hell are they going to send you a gift? If you don't agree with them and you hate them and you're against what they're saying, you call it demonic. Why in the hell would they give you a gift? Why would they forgive your sins? That's another thing. The only way of forgiveness of sins is through Yahweh Shai. So by default, when you guys don't repent and you call us crazy for trying to help you get to Yahweh Shai, you don't have no forgiveness of sins in these times then. That's the other, that's the other uh, side of that. You, you saying all that and being against the Lord. Yeah, you seem cool and you still getting honored because you get, we got one of the scoffers with the new covenant. Yeah, cool. But on the flip side of that, you ain't going to be forgiving them no sins in these times. So congratulations. You played yourself, a lot of you guys, by blasphemy. This is what you guys have been doing in these last days. All you camps got these, all you brawlic guys and carnal brute beast guys in these camps. All you fleshly worldly guys in these camps, man. So congratulations, you played yourself. A lot of you guys, man. It's crazy, man. You're fighting against what it actually says in the scripture. You're trying to show me in that, but it's crazy. The hypnotism is, and the, the, the witchcraft and sorcery that men have been uh, underneath for decades is, is, is too strong in these last days. Paul had to deal with sorcerers and guys that used witchcraft back then. And enchantments and uh, guys that were claiming to be uh, the Lord. All types of stuff Paul had to deal with. Guys teaching women and worshiping the women. This, this is, man, it's a lot. And the whole time, the main objective was just teaching what the Lord taught. It's crazy. The whole objective what Paul and the apostles were teaching was just the Lord's doctrine. One way, one spirit, one faith. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Yahweh Shai. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. See that? And gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Yahweh Shai. To, it says, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Yahweh Shai. It didn't say Moses. And it says that we're going to become to the fullness of a perfect man. Guys think they perfect. <laughs> it's crazy. Once you have came into Yahweh Shai, that is what has perfected you in the spirit. Once you really understand the Lord. So I'm going to get on out of here, man. Repent to the new covenant, man. That is what the Lord gave his life to establish. We read it in the scriptures, man. Not Moses. The Lord gave his life to change the priesthood from Levi to Melchizedek. Shalom. You lost another one.